Hey folks, back in Devon again. Curiously, it's not raining. I don't know what's going to happen. You know what that means, don't you? It's going to be raining soon. Right, I hope you enjoy this episode. Um, it's going to be a bit of a, um, a daily driver episode. It's not a calamity, but I need to fix a couple of things on this. So um, we've got into October, and it won't be long now before um, all of the leaves fall off all of the trees. Um, and I end up having to do a couple of jobs on this, which I've been putting off all year long. First and foremost, water pump gasket. So there's the water pump down there. Notice there's quite a lot of moisture around the V in here. So I need to really get, the, if I get the fan off and decide whether the water pump gasket is leaking or not, or whether the water is actually coming over the front of the, uh, of the engine V. Because basically what happens is every single time I start the engine up, the alternator takes a little while for itself to, to, to warm itself up. That could just be a brush or a dodgy connection. In fact, there is a dodgy connection on there. Um, and the second thing is the belt squeak. All right, so that's the first job I need to fix. Uh, we fixed that one. I'm going to give that a clean up just to make sure it's not continuing because now I've got a decent seal on the expansion cap. It shouldn't do that. The second thing I need to do is the heater. It's disconnected at the moment. And the heater's disconnected because... It decided to um, steam up the cabin one day. Uh, I was driving up to pick up the interior for the white project car that's been sold. Um, and all of a sudden, the uh, the cabin just filled up with steam. So I pulled over. Look at that water. There's water at the top of the water pump here. And that's come off one of the hoses on the back of the water pump. So there's only one hose on the back of the water pump. It's the heater hose. And that appears to have a leak. So I think what I'm going to do is take those off and renew the clips. There's also a lot of kind of, you can see, well, you can't see, I can see a lot of deposits and stuff around a lot of these hoses. So that's all wet. So I think it's going to be a case of taking all these uh, clips off making a good big mess with the um, coolant <coughs> which I might just have to drive it back out onto the edge of the barn and just take the bottom hose off I think that's going to be the easiest way of doing it and then just let it drain its coolant out so I don't have to panic around in fact just looking around here I mean I drove down yesterday um, in torrential rain so there is a bit of water and stuff on the chassis. A lot of the oil leak down there, by the way, was from the low pressure power steering hose, which goes onto the power steering pump, which is underneath the alternator. Um, and that was leaking as well. Right, so in a nutshell, I've attached up <laughs> an expansion bottle and I put pressure in it. No pressure. It is not pressurizing at all. Now, what I need to do now is reach right down the back of the engine here. You can see one of the heater stubs. Where are we, it's my finger. One of the heater stubs is right there on the tip of my finger and the other one is um, inaccessible so it's right down the back you can just about see the clip for it just to the side there if i there's a clip down there so i need to get the heater hoses off and i'm going to put another pair of hoses onto the heater matrix and see if i can pressurize it that way um otherwise the dash is going to have to come out i have got another heater matrix this that's the heater matrix, two pipes, and they, it goes in the, the bulkhead like that, so the two pipes come out over there. Um, as you can see, it's got plastic end caps on it, and it's possible that either it's broken the seal where the plastic end cap goes, or something's gone wrong with it, or one of the pipes has split, because the pipes do split from time to time, but only normally when they're being badly installed or removed. Let's hope I don't have to take the heater matrix out, because it's a fair old job in all honesty. Um, so, a few moments later. You're probably fine, but if you check the manual for this, it will say, in order to remove bottom heater hose, start by removing dashboard and heater. This is the sort of wanker thing that these guys would do, isn't it? Let's see if I can get this in there. Now, now I can see the end of the hose. It's fucking torch keeps moving. Get there, you fucking stay there, you bastard. I do love this job really, honestly. It might not sound like it sometimes, but there it goes. 
do love this job. I love this car. Sometimes. Now this is, in fairness, this is a job that I've been putting off since I think it's about February or March. It's been a fair while. Right, it's loose. This is the right off. Right, now. La 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 la. I took some expansion to get out. Let's see if we can find a couple of pipes that will go straight onto the old heat. Ah. One. And that's two. Two heater pipes. What a bunch of tosses. Right then. To get this heater matrix out, um, and you need to bear in mind that when a Range Rover is built, the heater matrix is actually hung above the production line and the rest of the car is assembled around it. Right, here we go then. <coughs> so, just taking off some excess bits that I really don't need in the car. Now I'm putting stuff up there, it's all going to come down again in a minute, don't worry. Transfer box, knob, comes off, OD joy, then we need to get this um, gear stick top off. So this fella here, is the, the top piece is separate. So if I go back and then put the big screwdriver underneath the top piece on the back and twizzle, I'm not carving any plastic up here, but then that bit comes off. Underneath it, there is a little C-clip. So the C-clip comes out. Okay, little C-clip. And then the button comes out that allows you to move between the gears. Now, underneath that, there is a whacking great big nut, which is impossible to fit a socket onto. But I often find just putting a flat blade screwdriver um, down the side of it, I can undo the nut and it allows me to remove the top of the gear stick. By the way, I have disconnected the battery. The battery is out. Not out, disconnected. Because obviously I'm going to be pulling um, all manner of electrics apart. Now I've undone the nut, I can lift this whole section off. There's the knob and there's the nut. All right, I'm going to put the little C-clip back on here. I've probably got more C-clips around and about, but it just saves me shouting about it later on. This centre console section comes out fairly easily. Take the ashtray out, and then it's just a case of lifting it on the corners, and it's got little plugs all the way around. And then underneath, there's a little blue connector here um, for the lights that go either side of it. Um, He's out of the way. Next, we need to undo the two bolts uh, that secure. The two bolts are in here. There's two bolts, one either side. I need to undo those. Um, how am I going to do that? Let's undo, because I need to faff around with handbrake as well on this. So I need to wind that back and take the clevis pin and disconnect the handbrake. So let's pull the electric light Sorry, electric light, electric window board out first of all. He comes out fairly easily. And just pull the connectors off the back. Because they're all colour coded, these, so it doesn't matter. You pull them off with gay abandon. And there's no issue. Oh, I say you pull them all off because they're all uh, colour coded. Um, they were colour coded. Plus it's a different thing, it doesn't matter, I don't care. Right, okay, here is the clip for the handbrake cable. You need to do this because otherwise you can't lift the centre console out. So here is just a case of lifting the clip over the back of the clevis pin. I like these style of clips, they're very nice. Pull the pin out. Clevis pin can go back together again in the box. Now the handbrake you see, comes directly upright, so it gives me room in order to lift this thing out. Um, now those fellas are going to be half inch I reckon. It's going to get half inch.
the washer there. That's good. That's out of the way. Now, once these heat heater hoses come out of the way a little bit, there's two screws that sit just down here. Let's move the camera around a little bit. They just sit down here at the aft end, underneath where the uh, um, gear sticks around goes. And they're crossed. And they're not very nasty. They just undo them. One. This is all fairly loose, by the way, because I've had all this lot apart recently to put the fucking matrix in in the first place. Now, it's quite a big chunk of wiring that goes down here, because this is not the loom that goes to the back of the car, but there is a loom that goes down to... Just keep my big bag of um, coins there. There is a loom that goes to all the window controls, the seat controls, and everything else like that. So we'll have a look at that in a second. Let's see if we can get this out, first of all. Um, so now, if I lift this up and pull it backwards. Unfortunately, there's a load of crap in the back of the car, but that has allowed me to actually lift it. Now, in here, I've got a number of connectors. So let's pull those connectors apart. See if we can just take this out and leave the loom the centre console intact inside the centre console. Another one. A big bastard there. Is that all of them? I don't believe. That's a little one. I think that's all of them. all these things just a case of not rushing right so the loom here I can see is down the back of the gear stick and the gear stick is caught on the let's get the loom so we move the loom to the other side of the gear stick there's the loom there in my hand where they're on the stair going clip clip deep clop on the stair I promise I won't sing again and lift this up further there it is it's out and that has got all its original loom and everything in it. So all we've done there is remove the centre console, which is now going to go into the back of the car. As I will run out of space storing ship. I've got the loom that goes down to the centre console, including the handbrake switch. So I'll take that off for a second. And I've got the heat pipes. That's all I've got now. So that's that. And that's that. That's good, isn't it? Right, let's look at the centre console next. Um, um, that needs to come out. The switch console needs to come out. They're just plugs. There's little plugs on the back of them. Don't go medieval with them because you just snap the plugs off. These are the ones that are colour coded. Do apologise. These are the fellas that are colour coded because each one of these plugs has a peg on it you can't see. Each one of these connectors has a plug on it, which you can then work out which needs to go back to which plug. And there's all the dash switches all out that go in there. We have got the radio to take out. And I bet I haven't got my fucking tool here to take it out. Never mind, it could fucking stay in. I'll probably find a couple of um, bits of welding wire to get it out. How does this thing come off? There we are, like that. That comes off like that. And there's a little tab down there, I think, if I remember rightly. That side's loose. How to steal a radio from a Range Rover? This isn't an OE fit, by the way, this radio. There we are. Radius! Ouch! That does make life a little bit easier. It's got a standard ISO connector on the back. No, it hasn't actually. It's got some fancy fucking Sony connector on the back. That's the ISO connector then. There's the ISO connector. One. Two. And an earth. We 
which is tight for some reason. Might have to get a little spanner to get that out. So all I'm doing here is just undoing the earth pin on the back of the radio. It's just a little pin and there it is, the thread's moving now and it attaches the earth wires to the back of the radio unit. So that can come off. And then the last thing I want to take off is the aerial, um, which is, does that come out of there? I believe it might. The aerial is pretty knack knackered up. Right, there's the radio mounts. That can all go back in there now. I'll leave the cage in there, there's no reason to take that out. Right, next, let us pull off these heater controls. So, literally, they just pull straight out. They're not like the early ones where they've got screws underneath them. Uh, they can be a bit sticky sometimes, but these ones, as you can see, a fair wiggle, and they're coming off. Is this one going to cause me difficulties, though? That one came off. So, if they do cause you difficulty, it's just a case of putting something behind against the edge and the reinforce them. Then two nickel screws at the top. Now this thing behind it has got all the bloody lights for the radio controls and they're a faff. Um, I'll show you when they all come out. I've got LEDs fitted at the moment, but they need to come out because the LEDs don't work properly and I'm not happy with them. It's one example where an incandescent bulb does better. So when this comes out, just be careful with it. It's got bulbs on the back. There's one of them's already come out, you see. Now, all of this lot here should be coming out at the same time and there should be a plug connector thingy which is probably hidden away down here somewhere but I'll find that in a minute we'll find the plug in a second that can sit there but these are just LEDs on here which is why I'm being a little bit less careful about them right now we need to get this whole lower dash area off so these fellas these fellas there's fingernails underneath them lift them up and they do that. Or you can use a screwdriver. The ones at the end of the dash have got smaller holes inside the dash. The further along to the driver you get, the bigger the holes. Right, now you've done that. There's a wedge of screws along the bottom here. find the connector I must have tucked it up so I just case of unplugging the bits and bobs from the various controls there we are that's out and the console's out just done that bit. now let's get on this center console next um, so there's a couple of things with the center console it's got screws right up underneath here that go into the bulkhead um, but we're gonna need to take them out so we'll start by using a screwdriver just to undo the fuse box again, power's disconnected. This is why you need to take the centre console out because sorry, the, the, the gear sticks around that because this will not come out if the gear stick surrounds in.
while I'm on this side. This then whole panel then comes out, drops down, little blue connector, which is for the uh, dash light dimming, and the whole fucking thing comes out. There we are, he's out. And then down here I can see, oh the second screw isn't even in the second console. Right, let's put the light over this side. <sighs> fucking extension lead. Get in there, bastard. And these hold the whole um, aircon unit up. Now there's a couple of screws at the top still that need to be undone in order for the aircon unit to move downwards. But I want to get the centre console out first of all. I might need to get the aircon unit out first. And the big washer. Let's take this book out. Booking my book face when out there. Big fat washer. Penny washer. It's going to come out. The washer's more difficult to get out than the fucking nut. That is. Right, so they can go in the box. Whenever you remove anything from a car, it's always best to chuck it somewhere in a box or something like that because otherwise you're just ain't going to find it again, are you? You put it on the floor and then you'll jump in the car, strip your feet across the floor and that'll be it, gone. And it will be never be seen again. What am I chuntering on about? Even I don't know what I chunter on about half the time. nuts and a washer. Right now this can start to come forwards. Let me get in the car now. The lamp can go over there. Lampy McLamp face. And this fella then starts to wiggle its way forwards and out of the car caught on the heater pipes and all manner of crap at the moment. Now, at this point, you should be able to see the connector for these lights. And there it is, down there. Although most of them have fucking fallen out by now. Let me just undo this connector, if I can get my hand around it. No, there's another connector that's in the way. Another connector that's about to get snapped off and sent somewhere. Right, okay, that's out. Let's take that one out of there. Right, that's that centre console piece out of the way. I've got all of the bulbs there, which are all hooked up with that. I've got this, which is caught up on the back of the aircon unit. One of those things. So it looks like we might have to undo these screws on the top here. Next, I'm not making this shit up, honestly. These are a pain in the arse to get out these fucking heaters. And while I'm here fiddling around with this, all these other bits can get on the back as well. Because all of this lot on the top here has come off shortly. And I shan't call you shortly. <laughs> now what I did, because I've done this before, this aircon shroud is a pain in the bollocks because it doesn't go out the way. Um, so what I've actually done 
it's broken into two pieces, cut it, and then dried it up with some tape. Because it just is an utter fucking pain in the ass. Come on, tape. It's good tape. It really is good, very good tape. You can see there, it's not fucking coming out. Right, there we go. There's half of the aircon. Um, I'll pull the aircon pipe back. So it's, it's the breather pipe to the other side. Take the loom out. So I don't need to take the loom out. I've just unplugged the loom down here. If I can find somewhere to put that, it'll be helpful. There we go. There's that whole loom. I can go back in there then. Because then this is the accessory loom for the clock and the door mirrors. Ta-da! I don't know what you thought I did, but just cut it along there and put some tape. Right, let's just take that out of here. Right, next, I think what I need to do next is get this aircon box down and onto the floor so I can get the centre console out. So, feet out, tools out, because it's basically going to sit there. And basically what you need to do is just yank it forwards, off its screws. The centre console should really be coming out by now. What's stopping it? No loom. There we are. Ah! vent that goes into the footwell that was caught on that. This can now come out. Ah, before we can take it out completely though, there is a chunk of electrics that goes down here to the... I think this chunk of electrics has actually got to unplug off the cigarette lighter. So if I turn this upside down, I can see it, you can't unfortunately. And there's two wires, they connect the signal wire, signal lighter onto it. And I can untangle it from the rest of the loom over here. And there we are, that's the centre console now. My ABS switch, I'd already unplugged anyway. Right, now, aircon is down. And slightly out of the way. Now what we've got is a world of shit. So there's the fuse box, uh, wires for the um, cigarette lighter, and then we've got these two wires here. So if I take the pipes now off the heating unit, one pipe, two pipes, I'll just take them right off and out of the way so they don't get snapped. These fellas are the ones that get onto the back of the car, to the rear seats. This lot should be able to come out now. It's caught up with the radio earth for some reason. That's all for the centre lights. I'll put that over there carefully. Now on this side of the car, we've got all the other half of the loom. So there we are. So the loom is now largely apart. Now, I've got some connectors here for the heater itself. So I've got these two here, which go to a connector on the top of the aircon unit, which I'm going to peel out of the way. That can stay with the heater. And that's those two. And then I've got these wires here, which all go up and around here. There should be a big connector up here somewhere. Oh, come on, fucker. Right, that's the hat. There's a screen there, that's off. There's just the various pipes that go to the different dash top vents and holes and things. Um, there's a connector, oh, we need to get this thing off the top here. So this dash top thing needs to come out. There's only four little screws. I didn't see fucking any of that tough. Right, that comes out and then the light comes off the back. 
and that can go down there and out the way. I need to clear out this up next. There's a whole world of crap and bollocks up here. That can do this job, so it's all going to go on the floor. And then there's four screws in here that are for holding this side of the dash to the dash frame. So I need to undo these four. Right, that one's not even done up. You need to do these because you need to be able to lift the dash up in order to get the heater out. dash is loose okay that's all I need is, is that much kind of give so I can actually get this thing out right then there's four bolts in here that hold the heater unit to the bulkhead they're not difficult to spot uh, but obviously all four need to be undone and they are bigger than half inch they are 9 sixteenths or 14 millimeter swiveling out and work out where all the uh, electrical connections are. There's one electrical connection that goes to the back, uh, but I need to work out how all these other loom connections fit on as well. fucking battery up. Well, it's good news actually because we can have this thing out in a minute. Right, you can see the heating unit's now free. But now comes the tricky part because we need to get it out without wrecking it. So what you basically need to do now is pull the heater unit forwards and swivel it around so it needs to come out like that. Let's get rid of that stupid thing off my screen there so I can see what's going on. is a faff, believe me. Ah, this um, vent here is in the way. Let's take that vent out of the way. That's in the way of the motor. That's forwards. And then this edge comes forwards. And you can see how the aircon unit being in the way going to be an utter nightmare can't you right so you can do it like that now i've done it like that i should be able to swivel him slightly sideways keeping the heater pipes at the back safe although of course we're replacing this matrix so i couldn't give a flying fuck about it but i do want to find out what's going wrong with it now before we go too nuts on this i need to get all this loom out i think we have to take these off here there's one, there's two, what else have I got here, I've got these two up here, and I've got this one here. And that's that lot off, and then at the back I have got one for the motor, which is off. Right, so I think we're now free of loom, that one there can stay. Lifting the dash for here, wiggling it out. Slowly but surely, softly, slowly, catchy, monkey, and out comes the heating unit with one vacuum pipe still attached. Come on, vacuum pipe, off you come. There we are, vacuum pipes off. Heating unit. Oh, 
What a fucking balls ache.